back at you with another video from 80s Nut. Sorry I've been away so long. I won't let you down again. But truly, uh, I have been uh, extremely busy. Um, you guys go ahead and comment down below what movie I referenced that line from. Okay, today's video. Today's video I'm going to go ahead and talk about and tear down the first generation Bose Wave Radio, a true engineering marvel when it comes to uh, design and sound. Um, sound of this unit for its size is not comparable to anything else out there when it comes to uh, bookshelf or, uh, or uh, countertop radios. It's in a league of its own. Um, okay, so this particular unit is uh, made in the good old USA. There's a reason why this is more sought after or compared to the new design, right, to its predecessor. Um, and I'll break that down and tell you why this one is such a better unit and why till this very day it still goes for a pretty penny um, if the unit has been restored correctly. Um, Okay, so this particular unit, the model number ends in a G. They offered it in two different colors. The black, which is kind of a charcoal, and the white. And this one ends in a P. Other than the color, they are pretty much identical. Oh, that's from another movie line, uh, identical. Um, anyway. The unit was was discontinued and redesigned, not because of it, poor design quality. Not no no actually because of the end user not knowing how to uh, take care of the unit. The PM the preventive maintenance was or the lack of. Um, so the unit was redesigned and. The new design is this here. There are similarities. The, the obviously the the sound is pretty much identical. The because they use the same. Um, if you have something good, why mess with it? But they use the same speaker box that's inside, that's tuned to the speakers. Um, and I will show you the differences when we tear it apart. But the quickest difference that you see between these there's no door to put the CD in and the bottom one does have a door to put the CD in and this one has a mechanism that 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 actually uh, um, 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 sucks the CD and just siphons it in uh, it's a mechanical mechanism with, with with gears and plastic gears that wear and jam and the the tray jams up that actually grabs it but that's the difference on the front, but let me explain some of the stuff on the back. So some people had complained that the bottom unit had no headphone jack, and now it has a headphone jack. And it has the Bose link, which you can hook up the newer one to the Bose receiver. And they also did away with the, um, this has a removable power cord. Um, the other one is a permanent power cord that actually goes through the housing and it's not removable. Now, why do I recommend this unit over the, the newer unit? And I'll explain to you why. Um, okay, so I've been collecting and, and repairing and dealing with bows for about 30 years now. Uh, Back in the days, we had a huge facility, one of the largest in California when it came to um, re refurbishing and warranting Bose um, products. Um, so early on, when this Bose unit was introduced, um, the biggest the biggest thing that they did was they added a CD. So the first the first gen right series one of this Bose Wave was just a uh, AM FM radio and then they introduced the CD player which is the unit on top. The old unit looks identical to this other than it did not have the CD uh, 
feature right? CD player um, so when you want to play a CD you open up the door place the CD in, and you shut the door uh, this has a soft close there um, the issue with that is uh, the first few years things were going great I mean this radio just dominated the market and within a couple of years people started sending them back under warranty thousands upon thousands now and it wasn't for for bad workmanship of the unit no it wasn't that at all it was when you open up the door like most of the older CD units <clears throat> the the lens the optical pickup sitting right there you your lens and it's it's there so you can have I mean there's so many things that can go wrong with it the dirt grime debris uh, dust can sit on the lens and you got to remember not all these units sat on a shelf in some lawyers uh, some attorney's office um, most of them ended up in a kitchen or a garage um, and you would not believe the units that took apart that would have everything from milk to food to all sorts of stuff in them and same thing with the uh, garage ones they would have uh, oil and grime and it would end up on the lens now your average person was not cleaning the lens well enough or if they had oil on it they thought they cleaned the lens or they wouldn't mess with it at all and what would happen is the CD player would not read or if it read it would take a long time and I'll let you know what the um, the issues between the CD issues with with taking a long time to read because of the lens being dirty or because of another reason so they were sending these units back because the CD player wasn't working and the reason for that was because the lens is dirty so after Bo started receiving thousands upon thousands and really all of the facility uh, remanufacturing facilities were doing because they would send they would send these out to a number of different areas where they they would be under war they'd be warranted this way and what would happen is you'd get a PMO and you'd have to it would say something to the point of um, CD uh, does not read all right CD player does not read and the guys would just clean clean the lens that would be the first thing and all of a sudden it'd be working just fine well you got to remember under warranty Bose was losing a ton of money having having these units come back for something as simple as cleaning the lens so it was back to the drawing board um, and they needed to redesign it so this issue would not happen and that's why you'll see that a lot of the CD players DVD players they all have the same thing where you put the CD in through the front now that has a ton of issues that go wrong you know, sometimes a CD will go in or go in halfway and stop uh, the mechanisms fall apart and there's so many moving things more moving things and more issues that that go wrong with this one did not have that all that all you really have to do is just clean the lens or make sure that you don't get the lens dirty um, you can get away with using one of the units for six to ten years with barely cleaning the lens once or twice if you do that um, in in other areas if there's if there's a lot of moisture or oil and next to the oven you're cooking and you have this out there the lens will get dirtier uh, much quicker than that okay so that is the main reason why they redesigned the unit um, okay I'll talk more about the internals and things like that when we tear this unit apart um, should show you on the back side this had this has the uh, the output and input in RCAs has a it actually has a built-in antenna and uh, there's an internal antenna and it came with this external antenna and that would just plug in like so but the internal antenna actually works really well and it picks up most of the reception most of the uh, stations um, the input and output on the RCAs so 
input would be if you want to add, say, a cassette deck and listen to it through the auxiliary on top there, or a MP3 player, things like of that nature. Um, <clears throat> let me, let me just real quick. Gotta have some Red Bull. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice was getting a little raspy. Okay. Yes, I don't drink much coffee or soda, but I'll guzzle down a Red Bull like Coca-Cola. All right, so the RCA is on the back. So a lot of people complain about not having headphone jacks on this unit. Um, and no, it did not have them, but there are, there are ways to actually listen to it. The RCAs on here are low level ins and outs low level uh, outs uh, would mean that you would need a amplifier to amplify the low level. Um, you would not be able to hook up external uh, speakers to this just by plugging in a um, set of RCAs and send them out to, to your speakers. Um, you can't do that with low level outs. Um, so you would need to hook up uh, RCAs Basically, your component wires, the RCAs, would look like so. Now, I always say if you're going to use component wires, make sure you get quality wires. So these are your, what, your Phoenix Gold. These are a pair of Monster. And this is your uh, Acoustic Research speaking, um, wires. Um, so all these RCAs are going to be decent. Don't go out and get cheap China made ones that are like this and uh, my recommendation too is not to wrap them up this way when I put RCA's in put them away if I'm not going to be using put them in storage I like to put them in a bag sorry like so it'll end up like that um, the reason for that is because the sharp bends there is these are shielded and, and there's fiberglass in there and you take a sharp bend I can't tell you how many times when I was doing car audio or checking out home audio and these sharp corners well, they bend these in sharp corners and you crack the fiberglass insulation, insulation inside um, and it damages it, dam it compromises the, the insulation and you can have uh, sound interference so here's an awesome set of RCA's right and uh, same thing, I put them in a bag like this. Um, this is true quality for home theater, but same thing, don't go cheap on your on your RCA. So, so that way you don't have any sound interference, humming or whatever from there. Um, the biggest differences uh, on these, it's gonna be your, your shielding and even the, the components that are used, um, the solder joints, the so these are really, really nice. These are all, these particular ones are about 24 karat plated, but go ahead and get yourself a nice set of RCAs there for if you're hooking up the ins or outs. Um, if you're trying to hook up a phone or iPod or whatever on that, you can, you're gonna wanna get, I don't have some of the high-end ones for these. I've got these cheap ones. And what'll happen is they have a lot of interference, but um, you'll plug, these into the unit and this into your phone or iPod. Um, anyway, don't want these cheap ones, not just because of sound interference, something, worst case scenario, they actually break and they stay into your unit or they damage your, your uh, jack there. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. We're gonna turn this sucker around. Oh, oh, the remotes. So this came with the black remote, they call these the credit card remotes. Um, they offered it in the black or the white and uh, they actually work really, really well. These credit card remotes take the um, CR2032 button batteries, single battery per remote. And you can actually find the these remotes, they're remanufactured. They're, there's knockoff remotes that are made um, in China now, 
that and a quick way to know whether the remote is authentic and it actually is the original remote that came with the unit the original Bose ones I got all this crap from sorry the original Bose ones had this uh, little tiny tab that you put you press down on to open the battery compartment door and the China made ones you actually pull on the battery compartment door tab to the left there so this is genuine Bose and anyone that does not have it is not a genuine Bose and that's a quick way to find out um, honestly they're they're pretty much the same there's no there's no downfall in getting a generic one it works just as fine I didn't find any issues with them um, oh if you want to see the difference between the second gen and the first gen so so second gen and first gen um, credit card remotes so this would have been for the second generation one all right so first thing is if you want to take the lens off and you've 